Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorial in making multiplayer Unreal games or Metaverse applications. It is quite often that people want to communicate with each other with their voice. This video can be your starting point in learning a bit about utilizing Agora's Unreal SDK for such need. We will cover basically every step of making a simple voice chat demo using Blueprint programming. The steps include install the SDK, build a UI, load up the Agora engine, invoke the APIs, and handle the SDK events. We will conclude the project with a quick test at the end. Let's get started. First, let's start with Agora's extension GitHub repo and go to the release section. Here you'll find two SDK bundles for download. For this project, we just need the voice feature, so we just download the voice SDK, which is about 400 megabytes. I've downloaded this beforehand and unzipped it. The SDK contains Agora plugin folder. Later on, we will copy this folder into the project. So let's open up Unreal. This is Unreal 5.1.0. We'll go to Games, open up a blank project, select C++, and then leave these two options unchecked. Give a name, UE5 Training, and then click Create. This will create a project in a moment. Usually it takes two or three minutes. So project being created right now. We will hop over to the Agora developer console. We want to create a new project here. I'm in the project management area, by the way. So give a name Unreal Testing, choose use case for gaming, social gaming, and then uh, we will use the Tesmo app ID for simplicity reason. Later on, you should enable your project with a token with your app ID to add security for your application. So I created this project and make a copy of my app ID. Okay, so Unreal 5 just opened up the project and you may just close this uh, window shell here. So the project's being open right now, but we don't need to do anything in the project itself. Instead, we create a new folder inside the project directory and call it plugins, close the project. Make a copy of the Gora plugin into that new folder. After the copy is done, reopen the project. It will ask you if you want to rebuild the project because of the new plugin. Click yes. Okay, the project is now open. So the first thing what we want to do is to verify that the plugin is successfully compiled. You can verify that by under by going to the content drawer and look at the plugins folder 
and you will see that Agora plugin C++ classes are added. In case you didn't see this, you may want to enable this check under your settings. Now, let's cre um, create a new level. We call it Agora demo. Then um, we want to add some UI to it. So add user interface, create a user widget called Agora voice widget. Let's open it. So we want to create a UI with two simple buttons in it, join channel and leave channel. First we choose a canvas panel as a container. Then check a white image as a background. Just expand it to fit into the panel canvas and check a button over, make it bigger and put a label on it. Call this John Channel. And then we can just make a copy of this one. Control C, Control V. And use that as the, the leave button, leave channel button. Okay, so after this, I just want to put also a title label here, color blue. Mm, call this Agora voice. And then make the font bigger. compile it and save it and then we want to quickly verify this is working in the level that we created so go back to the uh, content folder and choose the level make sure everything is saved um, so here we want to open up the level blueprint So we want to use the widget that we just created. Search for Agora voice widget. Connect the line to event begin play. And for the owner, we connect to get player controller. And the result of that is going to be put to um, viewport. Viewport. Compile. It looks good. OK, save that. Let's give it a run. It's loading. Okay. After creating the simple user interface, 
now we're going to create the blueprints for the voice widget. Go back to the voice widget tab. Create a new function. Call init RTC engine. Here we will create an instance of the engine. So construct to instantiate the Agora RTC engine class. For such instantiation, for the ownership, we connect the outer to get player controller. The turn value will be promoted to a variable. We're going to save this as RTC engine. And then we will want to initialize this variable. Now the initialize call has a pass by reference a variable called the Agora RTC context. Um, so we're going to do the set by ref variable call. Make this line to here. This line should be connected to here. And this will be the context variable. And the value would be make from this command. So the app ID would be the app ID that we just created. Get a few here, control V. And it's optional to set the, the values down here. I can just set this to North America or the region. Um, channel to be communication and audio to be a game streaming. Now there's an important variable that you have to set, which is the event handler. In case you forget about this, you will get a minus two as the return value. So let's create such event handler. Same thing, construct an instance of the class. IRTC, IRTC, and an event handler. Set the ownership. Same as the other one. But this should be calling, should be called before the RTC engine creation. So connect the initialize. RTC engine call here and connect this one to here. And then the return value should also be promoted to a variable. We want to use that later. Agora event handler. And this value will be filled into the context. Okay, so the, the lines are not quite correct. So we need to connect this guy to here and this guy to here. As the correct sequence. Okay, so far so good. The last thing we want to do here is to um, see what the return value is. So we just do print string of that return value. Okay, let's pump up the display time to eight seconds. Compile.
and we go to the event graph make this function the first thing to call of the widget so make a connection to the init rtc engine function compile now with the initialization we also have a counterpart for destruction let's add that as our override function over override event actually so we're going to use the rtc engine here so at the end of the life cycle we want to clean up the engine by calling release so you can get a fresh restart this time here for simplicity i did a logic to check the rtc engine variable i assume my previous steps create the engine successfully and it's not null okay compile and save oh there's another change to save run the level for test yes return code zero for engine creation that means good next let's do a quick test with a simple api function of the engine here we will get the version number of the agora engine sdk so after printing the return code of the init here we want to print the version number let's get the rtc engine instance and call its function get version connect oh connect again and then we're going to connect that to print string with that return value compile and run 1.0 that's correct we just bump up the time so that we can see the display longer okay save okay the next thing we want to do is to create event handlers um, there are two events that we want to handle the first one will be when you join the channel what's the result of that the second one is when another user joins the channel tell me who this user is let's create a function called bind events We will make use of the event handler variable we created earlier. Note that I, I had a typo in the variable name. But anyways, check it over. Jack is a night out and bind to a callback event called John Channel Success. Connect this binding as the first step of the bind events function. Next, we're going to give the definition for the event handler. Drag the line out from the event outlet and then choose create a matching function to handle this event when it's launched. And we call this on John Channel success. And then let's give a definition 
of this function. So basically here we just want to print out what's um, in this passing parameters. I'm going to use um, format text to do that. And you would say join channel as a parameter, success, UID assigned UID as a parameter. And then connect the line. Assign this value over. And then we can call the print text function. Pass the result to that. Compile. Looking good. Go back to the bind event function. We want to create another event. Bind to user joint. So this will be called after that one. Similarly, we create the event. Event with the matching function. Name it. On user joined. And then we create a format text with UID as the parameter. User UID joined. And then we will do another print text with that format text as the input. You know what? Uh, we should make this to show on the screen longer. Change to 8 seconds again. And then change the color to green. Let's go back to the other function and change the color also, also the display time. Compile. Okay, so basically that's what you need for the bind event function. Pop up a little bit. After initialize the RTC engine, we're going to call the bind event function. Compile, seems OK. Next, we will create some action handlers for the buttons. Go back to the designer, click on the button, choose on click, and a new function will be created for you automatically. Okay, for the John Channel button action, we will use the RTC engines function, John Channel. Connect this to that. And the channel ID would be Unreal in all caps. And then we will print out the return code for the join channel call. We will create a format text again, and then we will use that value to do another print text call. 
note that the return call here indicates if the join is executed without issue on the client side, you will still need the on join channel success callback to ensure the Agora server accepted you into the channel. Compile, okay. Go back to the designer, choose the other button, on click. So we're going to call the leave function from the Agora engine for this event. I'm going to copy this. Control C, Control V, and then update the appropriate parameters. Connect the lines. And then we bump up the time for display again. Compile. And save. Finger cross. Hope this works. Mm -hmm. Join channel. I can't see the microphone. Join channel. Join success, assign this UID. Okay, let's uh, hop on to another computer and then I will add us the remote user and see if we can receive that remote user's voice. Just a second. Yes, that's how it works. Everything working. Cool. And this wraps up today's tutorial. Thank you, everyone.